Scientology has as its, I would say, one of the mo- their most important tools that they use is a thing called reports, Scientology knowledge reports. And just to set this up for everybody, and Claire and Mike, please feel free to interrupt and interject anything that I might miss here. Why this is important to talk about and to, uh, to dive into the way we are today is because as we talked about in the last episode with committees of evidence being called arbitrations, which they are not, they are more of a court martial, it's ethics, uh, it is part of the Department of Ethics. Now, Scientology has departments that are broken into divisions that have all these, de- you know, it's very uh, complicated. But Mike, we should put up on the uh, on your on the on the website Scientology's organizational board. Okay. If you ever no want to know the structure of Scientology and how it's how it's laid out as an organization and how it delivers Scientology to its its public. Look at this organization of board because it's in every organization of Scientology. Uh, you could see it. It's it's on the walls. Uh, and it has basically the structure, right, Mike and Claire? Yep. It's the structure yes. of how Scientology is run. Now, it's uh, run the same way for the C organization. It has an organization board and it has its own department of ethics. So there's a sales department, there's an ethics department, there's a letter writing department. What are the departments? What are the main departments, guys? There's training, training and processing, Mm -hmm. and then uh, the review where they review to make sure that levels have been attained and that quality is being upheld supposedly. And then there's dissemination, um, promoting Scientology to the entire world. And executive, executive yes. is the other major one. Yeah. Yes. So L. Ron Hubbard's at the top, supposedly, and then uh, David Miscavige is right under there. And then I'm assuming Tom Cruise is on the same level as <laughs> David Miscavige. Yes. Mm, okay. Slightly below. Well, yes. <laughs> but above all else. <laughs> yes. Above all of us commoners is uh, Tom Cruise and David Miscavige running, running things. Yeah. Which, speaking of which, did you ever hear the story about the imp based staff member who was sent to the RPF because he didn't call Tom Cruise, sir. As long as we're talking about Tom Cruise, we may as well just throw that tidbit in there. <laughs> yeah. Now, now at the risk of being uh, annoying, Mike, as usual, RTC is David Miscavige's personal organization at the top of this organization board. Int base in management is international management. Uh, that is again, David Miscavige. <laughs> and people like Claire and, and Mike were were in in management. Um, and the other thing that you mentioned, Claire, was uh, what was the other words you used that might not RPF RPF, oh, yes. which is the um, the punishments for uh, Sea Org members. It's a, a punishment pro- program called the Rehabilitation Project Force, which is laughable. Okay, tell us that story, Claire. Yes. So uh, the guy's name was Tony Cifarelli. He was a staff mm. member at the Imp Base. So an executive, right? Over there. Yep. He was a pretty important person in Scientology management. Right? 90% of Scientology called him, sir. Okay. Um, you know, he was a senior, had been in the Sea Org probably, I'm not sure, Mike, what do you think? Like 20, 30 20 years? years, maybe. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. And um, David Miscavige was touring Tom Cruise around the property and, and we're talking about gold base where the hole is, which is what going clear is based on and Lawrence yes. Wright's book. Yep. Go ahead. Yes. And whenever David Miscavige would walk into a room, it was expected that staff would immediately stand up at attention and say, hello, sir, you know, like instant reaction. And if there was anything other than that reaction to David Miscavige entering a room, then all hell broke loose. In this case, David Miscavige was touring Tom Cruise around the property, which was a privilege not afforded to any other Scientologist. Like just a a Scientologist in general was not allowed to go to this property. It was a confidential location even. Right. Yes. I forgot about that, Claire. 
Yes. You're right. <laughs> For many years, none of us little parishioners were allowed to know where Gold Base was. I forgot about that, Mike. Yes. Yes. No, even my mom signed over guardianship of me when I was 16 to go work there. And she had no idea physically where I was even. She didn't even know if I was in the same state as her. And she was a Scientologist. Yes, of course. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's insane. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So Tom Cruise was getting this private tour by David Miscavige through all the production areas of the int base. And so they walked into the area where Tony Seferelli worked and Tony stood up and said, hello, sir. Hello, Tom. And David Miscavige (laughs) instantly said, it's sir to you and had Tony hauled off and he got interrogated. He was put on heavy manual labor and then eventually ended up on the rehabilitation project force to be reprogrammed for such a heinous sin as calling Tom Cruise Tom and not sir. And I and I suppose the questions would have been the same as mine when I was interrogated about Tom. What are your evil intentions towards Tom Cruise? What are your evil intentions towards Mr. David Miscavige? What are your evil intentions? I mean, you are literally you are you are considered an enemy to the group counter intention, as they call it, and evil intentioned towards two men who are single-handedly saving the planet. Yes, 100%. And actually, it, to me, that, as you just exactly described, it ties right in with the, re- with the reports topic that we're going to be talking about today, yeah. because it is all about control and, reports. and leverage within the group. I remember uh, our friend Stacy Francis went on the ship once to perform for... Uh, before I, I believe before she sang for Tom Cruise's, um, but uh, yeah, the you know, the person claiming to be a Christian and used to be, I considered her family, but has since done uh, hate videos about me because she chose Scientology over decency. She once told me that she was on the ship and passed Tom, and a report was written on her. Ready, get ready for this, Claire. Mm-hmm. A report was written on her. Because they felt that she flowed sexual energy towards Tom as she passed him in the hallway of the fucking free wind ship. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, no. I, I 100% believe that. So when I was 16, when I just started working at the imp base, mm-hmm. I was uh, I had so many reports written on me because like um, a 45 year old man had a crush on me, supposedly, allegedly. Uh-huh. I never even uh-huh. talked to him. And two other people, I was told I was hauled into ethics and told that I was a black widow. Yeah, which honestly I'd never heard of at that point. (laughs) Wow, sixteen. This was not a familiar concept. And Claire, you didn't even know the guy. He just probably gave up a confession that I, you know, think of Claire Headley. I think of not Headley at the time, but I think of her. And you were then punished for somebody thinking thoughts about you. Yes. At, at not, 16. Not to mention, I was like, ew, are you right. kidding me? I'm 16. Right. right. What right. the right. heck? <laughs> right, right. Well, Claire, maybe you didn't read Dianetics, but if you are, if you were balking at the idea of a 45-year-old man, you know, wanting you, you're not computing per Dianetics. So I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. Anyway. In- I know. It was traumatizing on every level. <laughs> it always just, is. What, I know. The, those, those things. When it comes yeah. to Scientology. Yep. Yes. Okay, so we're talking about uh, the departments. Now, in ethics, uh, they have an ethics department of which they have an ethics officer and or called MAAs, Master at Arms. And these people adjudicate justice of Scientology. And so whether you're a parishioner, so they have an ethics department for the C organization and they have ethics departments for parishioners. And just so you know, as a parishioner Scientologist, that's where I was sent, and all children of Scientology are sent, and grown-ups are sent when they fuck up in life. They're sent to ethics. They're not sent to their parents. They're not sent to their caretakers. Scientology is the primary caretaker when you are a Scientologist. So this department is the one that adjudicates punishments, and it's called the ethics department. Part of the ethics department and and has uh, each department and each division has these coordinating books that anyone can see. Uh, They're called the green vols and the red vols. And uh, like Mike and I have mentioned, we all have them. 
case to the FBI, Department of Justice, the IRS, any lawyer needs information, we have them. And these policies are to be followed to the T. And one of them that we discussed is called knowledge reports. And this is how Scientology keeps running tabs on everybody in Scientology, in the Sea Org and parishioners. We are told at a very young age as parishioners, because we all read these policies, that if you don't write a report on something that you observe, and that person confesses that they've done something, and they, because they ask you, who knew about it? And they write it down. And if they say, well, I told Leah that I did this or that. Uh, when did you tell her? Where did you tell her? Blah, blah, blah. Who else did you tell? Where did you tell her? What did you tell her he or him? They call you into ethics and say, uh, so you knew about this fucking thing and you didn't write a report? We have no report from you, Leah. Claire, Mike. Yep. And exactly. so you are now subject to punishment for not writing reports. Yep. And you're an accessory to the crime. To the crime. Yep. Yes. And this is a staple in Scientology. A fucking yes. everyday activity is writing reports on one another. Yes. I loved it. I used to write up my mother. <laughs> I used to write up my husband. Which is yes. funny because when we started going to therapy, right? Like Angela and I in therapy, like in the beginning, my therapist would say, did you guys ever talk? And I was like, nope. <laughs> yes. If I had a problem with Angelo, I would write a report on him and I would send it to Scientology. Yes. Yes. And they would fucking deal with it. Exactly. Right. Mark has not forgiven me for the time I wrote reports on him. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I still hear about it from him. I know. <laughs> anytime, anytime there is a moment where something has gone wrong, like yeah. Claire, like we, we were going to get a rental vehicle. We arrived somewhere and, and there was supposed to be a rental car waiting for us and we get there and there's no car. And it's like, this always turns into, yep. Damn, Claire, the person who wrote that fucking report on the same, same operating pattern happening right now. Now, wait, Claire, give us an example. Give us okay. an example of a report that you've written on your husband. Yes. Okay. okay. So <laughs> there was a time when Mark, so Mark would r ride his motorcycle around the property. It's a 500 yeah. acre property in Hemet, California. So you know, most of us had motorcycles, not that were registered for the road, but just to get around on the property. Yeah. He had been like sleeping one or two hours a night for maybe two months. And um, he was driving home one night and he took the golf course and he flipped through a sand dune and like about near cracked his skull open. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I mean, he, he was lucky he didn't get really badly hurt. Mm -hmm. So he didn't tell me about the accident, but he was like walking around like a cripple, <laughs> you know, like, or like he was like, Oh my, Oh my legs, my, Oh, I'm like, what's going on. He's like, Oh, well, um, I biffed it really bad on the golf course. <laughs> and he told me what happened. And I was honestly really concerned. It's like, he could have killed himself. So I wrote a KR. Right. And a KR um, is stands for knowledge report. Knowledge report. Yes. Yeah. I wrote a knowledge report saying, Mark had this accident. He didn't report it. And I was I, honestly, I was just concerned, you know, and I didn't know any better. And I, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, in my Scientology cult mind, I'm going, oh, he is PTS, which means he's a potential trouble source, which means he's connected to a suppressive person. Mm -hmm. And if he's going to have other things continue to happen, unless this is fixed. So right. I wrote this report, sent it off. The problem being that I was in religious technology center. So any report from me had serious. Um, Wait, yes. right. Because then now just for people at home, you're thinking, oh, Claire wrote something out of concern, which, you know, it might have been the reason, but she's also, like she said, conditioned to write this report, which is taken as a justice action. Like Claire is telling on Mark and like she said, because she was in David Miscavige's personal organization called RTC, um, this report is seen as fucking Mark Headley. How the fuck, why the fuck 
and get your shit together. It is not yes. like, hey, Mark, we have this concerning report from your wife, Claire. No. We just want to see what's happening because, <laughs> you know, you know that if you're not getting enough sleep, Mark, accidents can happen and you could really hurt yourself. It is, you will cause an the ambulance. Sleep was never. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Yes, no, the no. sleep was never a justification. And yeah. to add insult to injury, and the reason Mark has not forgiven me for this is because it came from me up in RTC, like you're explaining, yeah. security jumped all over it. And not only did they take the keys out of his motorcycle and not let him drive, but they also chained the whole bike up. <laughs> like right. put a big giant chain on it, like statement to Mark, you are off the road, you are no longer allowed to drive until this has been. And just so you know, everybody, addressed. this didn't come out of concern for Mark. This came out of the organization not wanting an ambulance to show up to the property and cause ill repute to Scientology and David Miscavige's precious organization at Gold up there in Riverside County, as well as um, to him. And questions would be asked. Why are you, you know, what's happening? How did this accident happen? I'm sleep deprived. I'm being abused. I'm watching abuse. You know, you can't let that kind of outside influence come into the organization. And so it it didn't come out of care at all for Mark and his safety or the safety of others. Okay, so knowledge reports. Now, just want to talk to you for a second about the amount of reports there are in Scientology, Claire. There's how many types of reports? Oh, my goodness. Probably, I'd say close to 75 to 100. Types of say. reports. Types one of, my, of reports. One of my favorite is an annoyance report. I, I wrote a lot of those. And that's simply anyone or anything that annoys you. So that, yes. that's a lot of reports that I wrote. Yes. Yeah. Do we want to talk about some of these reports? There's a uh, knowledge reports, which is the most, I think, severe type of report. Don't you guys agree? Yes. And, and the big general, like in case there wasn't a specific report for the thing that you're wanting to write, yeah. there's right. the final, the things that shouldn't be report. Right. <laughs> Something that shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. You don't know what's wrong, but you smell a rat. And you're going now, to yes. Now the the this is the uh, kind of gangster report knowledge report because it has to be very specific and devoid of any emotion, right? Yes. As with mostly everything in Scientology, devoid of any emotion. But this one, you have to. It's very specific. You have to make several copies. It goes to the person's ethics file. It go, you know, f- because Scientology keeps files on every parishioner and Sea Org member, so they have an ethics file and they have a a preclear file, which is their quote unquote confidential Scientology counseling, and then yep. this ethics uh, folder. Which, by the way, Mike, I would I would say the ethics file is where a lot of um, you, you could find a lot of. Uh, confessions of what people have done in Scientology. And I don't actually know if they're, um, are they confidential files, supposedly? Depends who they're for. Right. If, if the government is asking for them or a, mm. a litigant is asking for them, yes. Mm. If some boss or senior in the organization is asking for them, absolutely not. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. But you raise what I think is the most important point of why we are talking about this at all which is the snitch culture of Scientology mm-hmm. is, uh, you know, exceeds the, you know, what people consider to be the worst case scenario, like Stas- the Stasi East German controlled communist countries where people would turn in their friends and family, et cetera, et cetera. But Scientology is way beyond that. But what really matters about this from a, a, like a bigger picture perspective, is that all of these reports get filed and those files absolutely must be kept. And uh-huh. every single person in Scientology has one or more ethics files. And within their ethics files is everything that anybody has ever reported about that person. So, 
for example, just a name, just plucking a name out of the hat, like if someone was to look in the Danny Masterson's ethics file. Just as an example, hypothetical. Just as a plucked out of the, you know, name out of a hat. Alleged. alleged, alleged. The alleged Danny Masterson mm -hmm. and the alleged ethics file and the alleged reports in his alleged ethics file. Yes. You would probably find numerous examples of people who noticed something a little astray in uh -huh. the world of Danny Masterson and felt obligated to write a report because they were afraid that they would get in trouble if it came out later and they had not reported it. Mm -hmm. Yes. You've just got to understand the mindset of the world inside the bubble of Scientology. It is fear-driven. Mm -hmm. And yes. people write these reports based out of fear. Yes. And so you have enormous amounts of information <laughs> contained in these files, and these files never get destroyed. Ever. Yes, no. And it, in fact, they've been converted to electronic. There's now a personnel ethics database where everything is scanned in electronically for mm -hmm. you know, anything in my ethics file, I'm sure is in there. Mike's ethics files, you know, they, they look for patterns of what people are involved in through their, it's not just a file sitting in a filing cabinet collecting dust. It's also scanned electronically forever. Right. Right. It's the evidence is there. Yes. So if you are somebody who's listening, who is who used to be in Scientology and you know you've reported a crime to your ethics officer, or your MAA or to your auditor in Scientology, um, you could try to get access to that uh, through through the legal means. I mean, I just I, it's, it's a, I mean, listen, somebody somebody like Laura DiCrescenzo, uh, who, you know, people can look up her story. She very smartly requested her folders. Uh, she was claiming that she had uh, was forced to get an abortion. And she said, of course, I said this in my Scientology sessions. I said it to my Scientology MAA. Uh, Scientology lawyers, of course, were saying that never happened. She said, well, let's look in my folders. And lo and behold, the case was settled. Yes. Was that kind of that it in a nutshell? Yes. Yeah, after the Scientologists fought all the way to the United States Supreme Court to not have to turn over the evidence. Yes, nine years of fighting. But somehow it worked out. Okay, yep. so, um, yeah, okay. So in knowledge reports, Mike, uh, should we read some of this? Sure. Or, or do you not, did you pick out any parts that you wanted to? I did. Oh, go ahead, Claire. Yeah, go ahead, Claire. So, you know, in the knowledge reports, PL, uh, oh, sorry. Oh, my God. I know. In the knowledge reports policy document here that we're yeah. looking at. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. Terrible slip. Listen, our listeners need to know the, the lingo. When we say yes. PL, that means policy. Yes. That yes. letter. <laughs> okay. And that means that it's green ink on white paper in the green volume. Oh, so it's in the green volumes about. that I mentioned. That's right. Yes. Available yes. Exactly. to anyone for anyone to see. With yep. green ink. Uh -huh. Yes. So this one section here, it talks about... Uh, Hubbard says the single most notable difference mm -hmm. between an upstat easy to live and work with group and a downstat hard to live and work with group is that the individual group members themselves enforce the action and mores of the group. That is the difference. No other in an upstat group at the first pinprick, Joe would probably have a black eye. Right. Uh -huh. And so, you know, that's just to me, an example of how for uh, you know ethics degenerated for example at the headquarters to where it was just random physical abuse of staff members left right and center right because what what we need to point out to our listeners is that remember scientology is not uh the l ron hubbard's words are not to be assimilated you can't you know have study and and what do you think this means? And what do you think this passage means? It is exactly to the T followed. It's exactly to the T enforced. So what you're bringing up, Claire, is that L. Ron Hubbard said a black eye, and that means literally this is how we govern the group, by knowledge reports yes. and beating the fuck out of each other. Yes, that's right. exactly right. 
Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely yes. 100%. And that that degenerated into the ultimate uh, insanity of the whole where it would, uh, I mean, the statement that you'd better get the crimes, quote unquote, out of this person by the time I get back and I will expect to see some black eyes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Was literally what happened. Yes. Physical punching and punching people in the face in order that they would get a black eye so that when Miscavige came back, the person could be paraded with a black eye. See, sir, we did exactly what the policy says. And he yes. never said, what the fuck? I didn't mean that literally. No, 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 no. Absolutely the not. exact opposite. I mean it literally. I yes. This is what I intend for you to do. And yes. you had better be able to demonstrate it to me. Leah, I saw people being held on the ground and literally punched in the eye so that they would have a black eye. Not punched in the stomach, not slapped in the ear, like literally deliberately being punched in the face and the eye so that their eye would get black. So this knowledge reports is one of the key ones. The other one is offenses and penalties. And in there, um, we so we would Chinese school where you'd chant this over and over and over again. So I can remember it without, unfortunately, reading it newly today <laughs> from 15 years ago, where Hubbard says, you make the penalties for noncompliance too gruesome to be faced and enforce them. And that is what Miscavige took that, you know, yes, it's roughly paraphrased. I probably have changed the wording slightly after 15, 16 years, but well, flunk, the, concept, the concept is the same that you come up with terrible, terrible punishments. And that, so for example, that's where Miscavige had all of the int executives cleaning out the, the cesspawns. I can't remember what they were called, Mike, the retention sewage retention ponds sewage ponds yep without proper hazmat suits or anything like that any protective yeah. gear mm-hmm. yeah in fact several staff members ended up in the hospital for respiratory issues because of that and they lied to of course the hospital they were given yes. a story to tell the hospital of what to yes. say and it yes. wasn't we are being subjected to this we are being t- punished for our quote unquote crimes and yes. we had to clean out a sewage system. They, they're not saying that. They're saying something no. else, right? No. And that was even in the early days of the whole, when I was still there. I know, I have no question, it got horrifically worse after I escaped. Yeah. So knowledge reports are, and this is horrible to hear. I mean, if you're listening to this and you think, well, what's done about it? Um, uh, Mike, Claire, uh, uh, her husband, Mark, Including uh, Marty Rathbun, who has since uh, is not well mentally, so I don't I don't like to speak too much about Marty. Jesse Prince, no. you know, a lot of former Scientologists and senior uh, Sea Org members have spoken to the authorities, and the answer is always, "Do do you have proof? Is there anybody new coming out of Scientology that could corroborate what you're saying?" So they have spoken to the authorities, um, and nothing has happened. Correct. Yes. Very much so. So knowledge reports, you are told to write knowledge reports. You get knowledge reports written on you all the time. And the problem is with this is that it's acted upon. So you're called in by your Scientology church. Like I keep using this as an example, but I had the unfortunate and fortunate luck of becoming part of Tom's little inner circle of Scientologists because not all Scientology celebrities were allowed to be around Tom. Right. Not approved. (laughs) Not approved. (laughs) No, one of them was Kirstie Alley, not not allowed, not allowed around Tom. They would close off entrances and exits. Uh, if you were there getting your Scientology services, and Tom was with, the, they'd lock down elevators. You had to go all the way around. You had to go like you couldn't. But if I was around Tom, I would get a knowledge report written on me by, let's say, Tom Davis or Jessica Feshback, because I made a joke that they thought was unsavory around Mister Tom Cruise. Well, you always have been a joker and degrader. This is true. Um, got a report written on me. Thank you for bringing that up, Mike. Uh, got a report written on me by 
I think it was Tom Davis because David Miscavige was putting together a birthday video for Tom Cruise. So uh, the people from Golden Era Productions, uh, from where you, from which you came, were doing a video uh, produced by David Miscavige, and so they were going around to the approved uh, Scientology celebrities and saying to say something nice about Tom. So I said, well, I'm pretty sure I know what this video is going to be. It's going to be, you know, crazy Jenna Elfman going, Tom Cruise is my savior and hero, um, which is what she told me on the plane coming back from Tom Cruise's wedding. She said that she had a realization that her purpose in life, part of her purpose in life was to serve Tom Cruise. I'm not joking. Are you wow. kidding me? I never told you that, Mike. No. Wow. Oh, my God. Mike. Oh, my God. Could you imagine? Oh, my God. That is pathetic. Yes. It's just pathetic. Not to be a good mother, not to be a good daughter, but to serve Tom Cruise as he single-handedly clears this planet and gets ethics in on this planet. Wow. Yeah. Oh anyway, dear. um... And so I said, I know what this video is going to be. It's going to be like Jenna Elfman, like fangirling and like being crazy on this video. Everybody's going to be like really like happy and like Tom's the most amazing. He's the Messiah, right? He's, yeah. And I said, I'm just going to do something slightly different because I think if you edit this right, it could be really funny. So you have, you know, Jenna Elfman, Bodie Elfman, the other kiss ass to Tom Cruise. And, you know, the Marisols of the world, the Stacey Francis's. Erica Christensen. Yep. And I said, now I'm going to do something different. Just start rolling. And so they start rolling. And I go, I don't love him. <laughs> Not great. You know what I mean? Like, what does Tom do? You know what I mean? Like, what does he really do for Scientology? You know what I mean? He's like, look at me. <laughs> look at me. Look at me. And I thought it was really funny. <laughs> it is funny. Got a report written on me. There's a there's a policy called jokers and degraders that you're not allowed to make jokes about David Miscavige, L. Ron Hubbard, or Tom Cruise. No. And in fact, in that policy, it says that anyone who does do that mm -hmm. is a special level of suppressive person. Of evil. Yes. Yes. Of evil. And I they mean, have evil purposes. Well, maybe maybe against... they're right. No, no. Mark would get called a joker and degrader constantly. All the so time yes, I got a report well. written on me. Leah's a joker and degrader. She made fun of Tom. And I was like, oh my God, I was like meant it to be funny. That's what I do. Like I try to make people laugh. I don't always achieve that. I mean, sometimes I'm I'm off the mark with my comedy. I get it. I said, but it really was meant to be funny. It was tongue in cheek. It was and I got sent to ethics for this. And then again. <sighs> Uh, interrogated on the meter. What are your evil purposes towards Mr. <laughs> Tom Cruise? What are your evil intentions? Now times that by a hundred. Like I've done that so many times in session. And, you know, people who have the unfortunate luck of working for Tom, who are Scientologists, have their church calling them in on behalf of the reports that are written on them. And could you imagine being called in by your church, uh, a parishioner saying, you know, I don't like the way Leah acted at a party and being put into interrogations at your cost and you're not being able to move forward in your spiritual growth because your church is reprimanding you for a celebrity or another parishioner in your church. It's insanity. It is insanity. And again, this is your primary caretaker. So it's like mommy or daddy, you know, constantly hitting you for for something that you, it doesn't make any sense to your little brain. Like what, why yes. am I being reprimanded by my church? But it becomes part of, uh, you're growing up in Scientology. So knowledge reports, you have to send a copy to the ethics department, to the spiritual department, as well to the person. So the person knows yes. that you wrote it. So this is yes. like more of a gangster report. The one that you mentioned, Claire, things that shouldn't be. Now, this is one that I started writing because I was like, fuck, I can't keep confronting people or having them confront me going, why the fuck did you write a report on me? Right? Yes. Right. Yes. Now this one, you don't have to send a copy to the person. Exactly. That's, exactly That's right. right. I forgot about that. I forgot about that. Oh it's my gosh. That was the report. little caveat. Yeah, the stealth report. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which funnily enough, that's what I wrote on my stepdad because he wouldn't let my sister join the C organization. And I honestly, selfishly, I was like, well, wait a minute. You shooed me off when I was 16 and now you're stopping my sister. Like I could finally have a family member here 
with right. me in this hell hole. And I know it's selfish because I don't want her here, honestly, but I was like, it's just not fair. So right. I wrote a things that shouldn't be report. And the funny part is that I saw my family so infrequently, maybe once a year for an hour, right? An hour, a year and a half later, my mom said, Claire, uh, I just want you to be aware that your stepdad has not been talking to you for a year and a half because you wrote that report on him. <laughs> I was like, like, you were like, what? Wouldn't, 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 wouldn't have noticed mom. Okay. Wouldn't have not have noticed. And of course now he's, he's trotting out doing hate videos on me. I get it. Oh, that the concerned father. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, and also fun about the things that shouldn't be report. You could put emotion in it. Yes. <laughs> Yes, exactly. You can't. And then, and then the other one that we really should talk about yeah. too, because it, on a more serious note, is the non interpolation order. Well, that- no, I, yeah, yeah. Before that, we get to ethics shits. Okay, okay. Now it yes. says this is a very in bold, important policy. When it is neglected, the organization will soon experience a technical drop, statistic, and lose income and personnel. Okay, the suppressive is terrified of anyone getting better or more powerful as he is dramatizing some long gone, but to him, it is right now combat or vengeance. He or she confuses the old enemies with anyone about and looks on anyone who tries to help as an insidious villain who will strengthen these enemies. So, this means that you need to write ethics chits or you are part of this group which we are considered part of. We are we are the group that doesn't want people to get better, Mike and Claire. That's us. L. Ron Hubbard defines us as psychotics, <laughs> that we are somehow fighting a war from a last lifetime that is no longer existing. That's what that paragraph means, that we're that psychotic. Yes. Right. But let me just say, Leah, there is another paragraph in this particular policy letter that that is very very good at illustrating the what really the, these reports are about. It yeah. says that you must chit, meaning write a report because they're called ethics chits. Mm-hmm. You must chit all discourteous conduct, chit all roller coaster cases, chit all suppressive actions observed, <laughs> chit snide comments. Chit alter is and then theta. Chit derogatory remarks. Chit old dev T. Anything in violation of ethics or dev T PLs must be reported. This is this is like literally saying anything and mm-hmm. everything is must be, be reported. reported. Yeah. And that is how the world inside the bubble works. Yeah, you're yes. constantly you are constantly narking on family members. You're constantly reporting your friends in Scientology and family. It causes a divide with family. I mean, my mother wrote me up a lot. Instead of being a parent, I suppose I would have been that parent, right, who is writing my own daughter up. Instead of uh, being a parent to my daughter, she would be at Scientology right now. Yes, it's the exact opposite of the snitches get stitches. Yeah. 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 And there's heavy repercussions to these reports. And I just wanted to say something, Leah. You mentioned earlier about this idea that you would, you know, write a report on Angelo. You're not going to talk to him. You just write a report and then the ethics department is supposed to deal with it. Yeah. This is exactly what the policy on staff member report says. In Uh fact, it says one does not expect an executive to front up to personnel who err. One does expect an executive to make a report routinely on the matter, no matter what the executive also does. Mm Mm-hmm. This is specifically saying the person who writes the report isn't supposed to go and confront or address the person, but they get turned over to the ethics department to deal with. Right. That is exactly what that says. Angela, did you ever write a report on me when you were in Scientology? You never did. Good man, Angelo. Good man. Wait. Wait, what? You never wrote a report on anybody? Well, you were not a good Scientologist, Angela. You may leave the room. Crap. 
No wonder he got kicked out in disgrace. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I think it's also important to mention just right at this moment that yes. anyone who wrote a report on David Miscavige. Oh, that was me. Yep. Was immediately investigated. In fact, so as we talked about earlier, if you're if you get sick, even though the policy yes. says Claire, even executives, yes, even executives. But so th so writing reports on David Miscavige. Mm -hmm. The other one was sometimes people would be getting handlings for being a potential trouble source, and they would say, "Oh, the I I'm PTS to David Miscavige," and right. that was the writing report on him or saying that was i think those people were, were on a special list yes to go to go to the rehabilitation project for and, I and to him. never cross his path ever again yes same and i thought i was being a good scientologist by writing up david miscavige because i assumed right. there was somebody because on the organizational board of Scientology, it says that there's a watchdog committee that was set up to watch people like David Miscavige. But I didn't know that he had gotten rid of the watchdog committee. Yes. <laughs> so I thought I was writing up some shit to, you know, the part of the organization that was going to say, you're right, Leah, this guy is fucked up. Yes. And we got to find Shelly. And this is fucked. This is not OK. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You're right. You cannot write reports on certain people. So no, you uh, the universal Scientology policy that most Scientologists believe in wholeheartedly doesn't really exist. No, does not apply yeah. to David Miscavige. No, it doesn't. For sure. It doesn't. Now, when you write these reports uh, in Scientology, they are, like I said, forever in your folders. Yes. Will forever come up as you get to your confidential levels in Scientology. They go through what's called culling your folders. They go through your folders. As well as when you leave Scientology, they do the same. They call your folders. They look for things uh, to take out of context, to use against you. So it's, it's, these folders are a gold mine of information um, and filled with very detailed information that if anybody needed, they can have. So these reports are required to write. Uh, if you don't write them, you get in trouble. Uh, and if you write them, you get in trouble. As I found out later in Scientology, with something called the Truth Rundown. Um, and Mike, you could put that up on your blog. The, the There's a description of it. I think the... Yeah. Somebody explained it really well, because I know Marty that... Marty Rathbun. That, yeah. Okay. So, and this is a, hopefully one Scientologist who's still in Scientology will hear this podcast. But one day you will be confronted with the reports that you've, that you've written. <laughs> yes. So you get penalized at the end of your Scientology career... For writing these reports. Yes. And you have to pay for that, too. Yes. yes. They turn around and say, hey, I see you wrote here a report on uh, Jenna Elfman. And I go, yeah, because she violated uh, such and such policy of Scientology. Okay. Well, when have you done this, Leah? I'm like, what? What? When have I done? What the fuck? I wrote a knowledge report. I wrote a standard knowledge report per L. Ron Hubbard. What are you talking about? Now you're punishing me for writing reports that I was demanded to write? Yes. It's insanity, everybody. Yes. Fucking insanity. You're right, Clara. You have to write. Okay. So my favorite thing is that there is uh, 20. Look, Mike, could you put the policy up too about the 23 types of reports? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's 23. Uh, then we get to one of and the that most. And doesn't, that doesn't cover all the dev T developed traffic. By, by the way, I have, yeah. taught, I have taught normal people the word dev T and people love this word. Let me just explain what dev T so dev T is because like it's a great word to use. Like you could use it on anybody. Your husband walks in and goes, you know, I haven't had sex in three months. You could say fucking dev T. <laughs> Your kid walks in and says, I'm hungry or I'm sad. You can go dev T like dev T. This is fucking dev T. Dev T is called developed traffic. Developed and unnecessary. Unnecessary. Traffic. Thank you, Mike. So yes. anything you do, like if you walk into a room and you're like, my mother just died. And you, they'd say, Dev T, I'm on post. Dev T, get your shit together. Dev T, get on course. Dev T, move on with yes. it. Yes. Like, you're, you're bringing nonsense into the room. Bringing nonsense into the room. Yes, exactly. Adding too much into a conversation. Hey, Claire, why were you late, Claire? Well, uh, because uh, I, my, I got stuck at a red light. Oh, that's okay. backflash. Unnecessary <laughs> response. <Yeah>. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, listen, guys, I need to go. I need to go buy a card for my grandmother. She died, and I'm, you know, you didn't say it was okay for me to leave for the funeral. Deb T, Claire. Yes, Sir? exactly. Deb T. Yep. Okay. All right. Now we come up to one of our uh, all-time favorites. Uh, this again is under the Ethics Department of Scientology and Ethics Shits and Knowledge Reports and all the good shit that comes from the Ethics Department of Scientology. And by the way, just to throw in a name. You know, Mike, as we've done this and as we've done, as we've done them aftermath, one name comes up because there is a senior official in Scientology, the ethics department. There's somebody who deal, and he was the reason uh, for my exit. One, of, you know, he was part of it, and many others. Julian Schwartz is a ethics officer in Scientology, but you know, known him all my life. He approved me to get onto my confidential levels of Scientology, right? Because you got you have to have an ethics officer of note approve you to go on to the confidential levels of Scientology. Julian Schwartz, I don't even know. I never knew that he was connected to David Miscavige because they sent in uh, originally when I was asking about Shelley and causing a ruckus about Debbie Cook and Mike Rinder, they sent in Mike Sutter and Han Zuli. Yes. Now, who are these two schmucks? Mike Sutter and Hansuli Stali are both, um, they've worked in RTC, Religious Technology Center, for, oh uh, gosh, 25 years. Okay. Um, they're both sec checkers, so they interrogate people as to their crimes. They, mm-hmm. They've just, they're both um, OTs. They've just been, I mean, they were both already long Well, David Miscavige thinks they're in idiots. 91. He, yeah. Because when I complained oh, yeah. to David Miscavige himself, that Mike Sutter and Hans Zuli tried to corner me at Celebrity Center and get me to step in line. I go, I don't know who the fuck these two idiots are, but that didn't work on me. And he goes, no, why would they, That those two are fucking idiots. That's what he and said. And yeah, just as a comment, I'm positive they were acting on David Miscavige's orders. I've no doubt David Miscavige said that to you, but that yeah. was par oh, for the course, course with him. He's a, yes. but babe, he said <laughs> the same thing about Tom Cruise. Yes. When he said he should shut his fucking mouth. This is David yes. Miscavige saying this about Tom Cruise to me. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yep. All right. So then when that didn't work, Julian Swartz was called in. Now, do you guys know him to be part of David Miscavige's crew? Because I never did no. growing up in Scientology. I didn't. No. He dealt with me. He was a cutout. He was a cutout, Leah. The, what is I it? mean, there are certain people who were used by... David Miscavige, when he didn't want to have someone directly from RTC that could be immediately traced to him gotcha. doing things that he wanted to have done. And that usually the, uh, there was a, a small handful of them. Mm-hmm. Julian I was, Schwartz I was, was a one. version of that before I was in RTC. Like I did right. ethics handlings with Michael Dovin and Andrea Dovin and Kirsty Alley and Lisa oh, so- Marie. Oh, interesting, because I was talking about people who had the unfortunate luck of working for time, and Michael Dovin and Drea Dovin were two of those people who uh, uh, lost their shit having to, because I know at one time Drea wanted to go off and be a mother, but she was being forced as a parishioner to serve time and didn't want to work the hours that she was working, and she was immediately sent into interrogation because the theory is if you want to leave and raise your family, you have undisclosed transgressions. You mean Tom Harm, because why would you want to leave and raise a family? And, you know, they had a beautiful house, which, you know, they, 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 per per this person who knew them very well, uh, said that they lost their house because they had to pay for this interrogation Wow. Because she yeah. wanted to leave Tom Cruise, just working for him uh, and to raise right. her family. But um, so you did all these ethics handlings on Lisa Marie, on uh, Dovins and uh, Kirstie yes, Alley. Before, yeah. And that was before I was in Religious Technology Center. Gotcha. So it was, it was the same as what Mike's, what Mike's talking saying. about. But yes. also right. uh, Julian Schwartz was part of the whole circle of people that were brought into this uh, Danny Masterson internal investigation that was headed by Angie LeClaire, who was a Sea Org member who all of a sudden has, uh, can't be Vanished. found, can't be found. And just to, just to tell you something, Mike and Claire, I've known Angie LeClaire. She was my auditor since I'm 16 years old. Yes. 16. 
So just to do the math on that, I'm 51. And until I left Scientology, I have seen Angie LeClaire every single day that I have gone to Celebrity Center. But lo and behold, a detective who was investigating one of the allegations wanted to talk to Angie LeClaire, went to the Celebrity Center in Hollywood, and all of a sudden, Angie was reposted to another organization. But since I'm 16, Angie has been in the same organization. Yes, I'm sure she was probably sent to Australia or Canada or out out of the country. Because that's what OSA does, right, Mike? Yes, is they, yes they, they, they did the same um, on the Lisa McPherson case where um, the even the RTC people that were involved in the tragedy of her death and grossly mishandled the, the events leading up to her death, they mm-hmm. were sent to Australia. So that they could be out of reach of law enforcement. So that they could not be served to testify in her case. But there's a there's a Scientology gag order. So a lot of these things people say, well, Leah, didn't you know about this thing happening in Scientology? That no, Scientologists are not allowed to talk to each other about what's going on in their lives. Uh, they are told that by their ethics officers. They're so told, don't tell your mother you were molested, don't tell your father you were ma- molested, don't tell your mother you were raped, don't tell your mother you were beaten. Now, if, let's say, I was in Scientology and I was physically assaulted by somebody in Scientology, I would be called to ethics, the person would be called to ethics, and they would say, do not speak to anybody about this. Right, Mm -hmm. Mike? Claire? Yes, absolutely. If I did go home and tell my mother, my Scientology mother, I was physically assaulted by a Scientologist or SEER member, my mother would in turn write a fucking knowledge report on me. Correct. And I would get in trouble for speaking. So that's how Scientology doesn't, we don't talk about, we don't know about what's going on with other parishioners. You could sit, be having coffee with another Scientologist who has a black eye. How did you get that black eye? They're not going to say Mike Rinzer gave it to me, Claire gave it to me, or some David Miscavige gave it to me, or, you know, uh, uh, Marty Rathbun gave it to me in the hole because they were trying to force confession. They're going to say I bumped into a wall. Yes, or even in the childcare situation, mm-hmm. they're not going to tell any other parents. Oh, m- my child was molested there. Oh no, uh, like so nobody else would take their kids there. No, no, it's mum's the word. You're it, this is how they silence their victims and enable the perpetrators to keep committing crimes. Correct. So this is called a non-interpolation order. So interpolation means upset, like an upset, uh, something that's turbulent. That's upsetting like people scientologists say like that's interpolating like if you ask them why didn't you go to the tony ortega website why didn't you watch the cnn anderson cooper why didn't you read time magazine why didn't you read they go it's interpolating it's upsetting yes why would i why would i want to be upset scientologists who's supposed to be clearing the world of all its ills can't be fucking interpolated and who are supposed to be able to confront and shatter suppression. Well, God yep. forbid that they would actually know something, uh, facts of crimes yeah. that were committed in Scientology. Yes. Correct. It's interpolating. It's interpolating, yes. Claire. Yes. So it's called a non interpolation order and says, what do you do with two or three students or it says pre clears that are causing trouble? Ethics issues a non interpolation order. This states that those named in it. The SPs and PTSs who are students or preclears are forbidden to interpolate others. And if one more report is received of their interpolating anyone, an SP order will be issued forthwith. So, yes, you don't dare tell your Scientology mother or father. You don't dare tell your celebrity friends or your non-celebrity friends that you've been raped or molested because it's a turbulating. That's right. And just so that everybody really understands this, because it sounds sort of, uh, you know, like, yeah, okay, whatever. The fact of the matter is if Scientology decides to declare you a suppressive person, If you have any family member who is a Scientologist, 
you will be immediately disowned and disconnected from, and they will never communicate to you Put again. Put out on the street. If you have a job with a Scientologist, you will be fired from that job. If you have friends who are Scientologists, they will all instantly abandon you and there will be a campaign spread around on social media saying, stop communicating with this person. If a Scientologist owes you money, Uh they will no longer (laughs) pay their debt to you. If you're renting an apartment from a Scientologist, you'll be evicted. (laughs) Yes. Oh, yeah. You're right. Your life will end as you know it. And here's the even more fucked up thing. When you have a non-interpolation order put out on you by the Ethics Department of Scientology, it is posted in public areas of Scientology. Yes. Yep. So people walk by and they go, oh, well, if Leah upsets me, I'm going to write a fucking report on her. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And even if she doesn't, and I just hate the bitch, I'm going to write a report on her. Oh, what's, yes. what's, it's a, that's, I, I mean, this is what happens. You get the label put uh-huh. on you yep. that you're one step away from being declared. So yep. you're already bad, like yes. real bad. And in the minds of Scientologists, someone who is in that zone or is declared a suppressive person or whatever they don't have any rights Mm -hmm. and as someone in the who's had a non-interb order put on them that puts you virtually into that category already so i wasn't joking when i said and so someone who finds you for whatever reason objectionable or they've had a dispute with you or whatever They'll drag shit up from whenever and say, oh, look, new interpolation from this person. And Mm -hmm. you don't have, when you're in that position, you don't have any right to be arguing. Right. Because arguing is interpolation. Upsetting, yeah. Like, that's upsetting. Now you're now you're upsetting the ethics officer by arguing about whether this is true or not. Right. Instead of just being now you're truly caught in the web the harder you yep. struggle the t- the closer you'll be to complete death and annihilation perfect, perfect analogy and committee of evidences just to wrap this all up is under the ethics department everybody it is not it is a as a justice action like a court martial taken against a parishioner or a steward member it is the most severest of ethics actions taken against the group a group member and so um, let's just kind of stop using the word arbitration. Yes. When it comes to Scientology non-existent, uh, that word. It is called the Committee of Evidence. And you could listen to uh, the podcast we did on that, to sp- specifically judges or anybody who, who uh, is in any kind of case with Scientology regarding this supposed uh, fake, fakery, fuckery. Um, yes. Yeah, go ahead. And as yeah, Justice Rosenbaum said, it's not arbitration, it's just plain arbitrary. Thank yeah. you. Perfect. Judge. Nail- he nailed it. Really? He deserves yeah. a special thank you because yeah. I, yes. I, he's probably the only judge with two freaking cents. With the clarify? with the yeah, who had the conviction to actually read and understand the policy and and know that they're just blowing smoke in everyone else's eyes to cover up their crimes. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Well, Claire, cannot thank you enough for once again joining us. And uh, we're going to have all these resources up for you on the website. And to all of you for listening, thank you for putting up with us, guys. <laughs> uh, thank you for having me on the show, Leah and Mike. I love Are you guys. Are you kidding of me, course, Claire? Claire? We love you. We absolutely love you. All right, you guys, until next time, thank you for listening. Bye. 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 Programming note. This is our last episode for the year. We wish you all a wonderful holiday season and see you again in 2022.